Numbers chapter 27. They, the nation of Israel is already at the plains of Jordan. They're in Moab. They are within sight of Jericho. The Midianites have been defeated. The Moabites have been defeated. The Sinites have been defeated. The people of Bashan have been defeated. Just a, a few days, I'm convinced, of going across the Jordan River and going up against the city of Jericho. They know that they're getting close and getting ready to go into the promised land and God has, they, they've talked about or are going to talk about the division of the land. They know that each tribe is going to have their portion. But there's a, a man by the name of Zelophehad. Zelophehad had no sons, but he had five daughters. Those five daughters came up and said, yeah, I know. Why did he have five? Because he didn't want six. Right. Uh, <laughs> those five daughters came up to Moses and came up to Aaron. And they had a question. If you're able to stand in respect to the Word of God, I'm only going to read about three verses of Scripture. Numbers chapter 27, verse number 6. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, the daughters of Zelophehad speak right. Thou shalt surely give them a possession of their of the wait a minute. A possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren, and thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a man die and have no son, then ye shall cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughter. Thank you, you can be seated. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father, as we come to you again, we thank you for the day that you give us, for the way you took care of us, for the way you watched over us, for the way you supplied every need. God, you have been so good. I know that every good thing I have is from you, and you've been better to me than I have reserved. I want to thank you this morning for the health and strength you gave us just to get up out of the bed, put our feet on the floor, and wash our own face and feed ourselves. I thank you for safekeeping from harm and danger, both seen and unseen. I thank you, Father, this morning for the privilege we have to be back in your house, and I thank you for each one of these that's come out. I thank you, Lord, that we've got this time and this opportunity to come and meet together again. It's always a privilege to worship together in spirit and truth. But, Father, I thank you this morning more than anything for saving me. I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for the blood that was shed at Calvary. I thank you, Father, that he did it all and left nothing out, left nothing undone. I'm thankful this morning that that blood was sufficient to cleanse me of my sin. I'm thankful this morning, Father, that it never has to be done again. I ask you, God, this morning, please forgive me where I failed you, where I've come short, where I've let you down. Forgive me for the things that I've said, done, and thought that was displeasing. I pray God you remove them and take them away and get them out of the blood. Thank you for the service already today. Thank you for the time in Sunday school. Thank you for the time in the prayer room. Thank you for the songs that were sung. Our hearts have been blessed. And Father, we can leave now and say it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. But God, I beg you now for the next few minutes, help me as I stand and try to preach. Help me to say and do the things that will be pleasing in your sight. I pray this morning, God, that I get that fresh touch, that fresh anointing from on high. I beg you, God, this morning to hide me behind that cross and let people see Jesus because this preacher don't matter. Father, this morning I beg you, take away anything that might hinder or quench. I'm praying, God, you'll have free reign in this place. Watch my mouth. Don't let me say it wrong. God, only let me say and do what you'd have done. Go with us now. Through the next little bit, help me to do what you'd have done. For we ask it in the precious, sweet, holy name of Jesus. Amen. In verse number 1 of chapter 27, the Bible says, Then came the daughters of Zelophehad, the son of Hepher, 
the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And these are the names of the daughters, Mela, Noah, Hogla, Milcah, and Tirzah. And they stood before Moses and before Eleazar. I, I said a few minutes ago, Aaron, but Aaron had, had already died. And this is what they said. Verse 3, Our father died in the wilderness, and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah, but died in his own sin. Why should the name of our father be done away from among his family because he hath no son? Give unto us, therefore, possession among the brethren of our father. And, the Lord, and Moses brought their cause before the Lord. Now I realize this morning that in a lot of situations people will say that God is anti-female. I've heard the Apostle Paul called a, a sexist, chauvinist pig. I've been told <laughs> I was the same way. Well, you know, I'm just trying to follow the book. We look at this and you say, why would that even need to be addressed? I'll tell you why. In the day and time that they lived, and in some cases, the day and time, right now, the way some cultures are, those five daughters would be left out in the cold. The name of their father would be forgotten in history because their family would have no part in the inheritance, it would be whoever they married, that then they would become a part of their, that family, and their father would be forgotten. Now in the day that we're living, some people still believe that way, but if you are following and rightly dividing the Word of God, and following the truth of God's Word, it should not be that way. Now listen to me. I understand what the Word of God teaches. There are to be no female deacons. There are to be no female pastors. Uh, I saw something the day before yesterday that I, I don't remember if it was Friday night or yesterday. I think it was Friday night. I used to be a man and Mr. Hemphill could write some good songs. But Joel Hemphill had a daughter Still, well, he's dead. His daughter's still living. Yeah. Her name is Candy. Yeah. And I saw where Candy Dunn chopped all her hair off and was now pastor the church. And I'm going, how many generations does it take yeah. to get away from the truth? Now, you can say, well, preacher, that's your opinion. That ain't my opinion. That's the Word of God. Amen. She's got no business doing that. Amen. No more business. I don't care who her daddy was. Mm -hmm. she got no more business doing that than, than Gloria Copeland has. We look mm -hmm. around, and yes, I will tell you, ladies, you need to dress modestly, but at no point am I going to tell you you need to wear a burqa, and the only thing visible is your eyes. Right. My Bible tells me that a husband and a wife, bear with me, you'll see where I'm going in a minute. My Bible tells me that a husband and wife is actually, even though the husband's the head of the house, they're to be submissive to each other. Mm -hmm. right. And that means your wife should not have to walk three or four steps behind you. Right. That you should have her beside you. Amen. And when she goes up and down steps, you help her. You open the door for her. That's not just the door going into a store. That's the car door. Yep. Hello. Yep. Front door of the house. Yes, sir. Hold that door open. Let me tell you something today. You say whatever you want to. We can say, ladies, that you are, and this is not really a Mother's Day message, but ladies, you can sit back and you can say, but God has relegated us to second place. No, sir. God has lifted you up. God has honored you. It was not a man that could give birth to our Savior. It was a little young lady who was pure and virginal and virtuous and still had her own. Right. So let's just look at this a minute. 
the daughters of Zelophe had came to Eleazar and Moses and said, Hey, why should our daddy's name be forgotten? Just because we were born female. Moses said, I'll take it to the Lord. And the Lord said, The daughters of Zelophe had speak right. Thou shalt surely give them a possession of that inheritance among their father's brethren. Thou shalt cause the inheritance of their fathers to pass unto them. And in verse 8, he said it doesn't just apply to the daughters of Zelophe had. It applies to anybody that they, that had children, but they were all daughters. Mm -hmm. We look today. And ladies, I'm just going to say this. This message is, might, you might think it's directed to you, but it's directed more to, to the men than it is to you. And we're going to talk about you ladies just for a few minutes. That's why I like to include not just mothers, but any woman who's the head of the house or... Wait a minute. That didn't come out right. Any woman leaving the home that has not had children because you have the influence and not having children does not diminish you in the sight of God. Yeah. Gentlemen, listen up. And ladies, you need to remind him of this once in a while you do it. I had a woman jump all over me at a church in Cana, Virginia. When I made the statement that the husband was the head of the house, mm -hmm. she jumped me after service. They'd been married for over 50 years. She said it took me 50 years to train him. She was not smiling. She was angry. Mm -hmm. She said, and in about three minutes, you've ruined 50 years of work. <laughs> now, hey, am I not right, man? Yes, ma'am. She got right up in my face, and I said, honey, all I'm doing is told you what came out of the book. If you've been living ungodly for 50 years, that's between you and the Lord. Amen. But ladies, understand something. And I'm going to say this plainly. I know that there are women who have been used. There's women that have been abused. There's women that have been mistreated. There have been women who have been... I, well, let me just say this. A man that will beat a woman, beat a child, or beat somebody that's elderly, you ought to be took out and whipped. Yeah. And I don't mean with a belt. He needs yeah. to have his hands hung up and whipped with a bullwhip. Y'all say whatever you want to say. Because he ain't a man. He's a punk just trying to abuse power. Yeah. Okay, let's get into this. There is not a woman alive anywhere, ever been born, that a man needs to treat her like a slave. That's right. The Bible tells us very plainly in Genesis chapter 2 that the Lord God said it is not good for a man to be alone. I will make, and this is not one word, it's two words. I will make and help meet for him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to give him a helper that's appropriate for him. You got all these animals out here. You got the cows, you got the horses, you got the pigs, you got the sheep, you got the birds, you got the rabbits, you got the squirrels, you got everything else. But what you need to understand is God said he needs one of his own kind to go with him through life, it's not good for him to be alone. And I'm going to tell you right now, that doesn't mean, honey, that you sit in the house all day and watch slop operas and eat chocolate. Right. When it says a help meet for him, that means that the husband and the wife need to work and toil together to keep that home going. Right. Nowhere does it say that she's supposed to be a slave. We were talking the other night about a man that married into our family. This was back 50 years ago. And I, that man would go so far as sit in a lawn chair while his wife was push mowing the yard and he would flag her, this ain't no lie, he would flag her down. She would come over and he'd say, I really wish you'd go in the house and get me a picture. Now, there was nothing wrong with his help. But, gentlemen, i got a sneaking suspicion that if some of us made that statement, 
Back in Pepsi's was in glass bottles. Uh, yeah. We'd been cut. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That bottle would have come across the side of our head. I mean, it's bad enough she was pushed on and he was sitting in the shade in the long chair. But then to stop her and say, I want you to go get me a Pepsi. Mm. Uh-uh. No, he treated her like a slave, and that's how it's not supposed to be. That's right. Gentlemen, let me just say this, and I'm going to say it just point blank as I can. I'm trying to rush through this. First Timothy chapter 5 makes it very plain. But if any, and he's talking about the man. But if any provide not for his own, and especially those of his own household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about a man that can't work. I'm talking about a man that's too sorry to work. Yeah. And gentlemen, it's not on us to help to, to put everything there is to do on that woman. Well, bless God, I'm the head of the house. No, you're not. You're just a, a grown little boy is all you are. It is not unmanly and it does not make you a sissy breeches. If she's had a tough day, help her wash your dishes. Or yeah. tell her go in there and sit down and watch the news and you wash your dishes. Yeah. It ain't going to hurt you right. to wash a load of clothes. That's right. Now I will say this, she does not want me to own. Mm -mm. <laughs> no. Won't happen. Mm -mm. They end up with black spots in the white shirt. But listen to me. Oh, we, we can chuckle. But bottom line, and I understand there are women that want to work. That's fine. As long as, ladies, you understand Titus chapter 2 says that your number one priority is your home and family. Amen. Amen. In God's economy and God's plan, gentlemen, He says it's for us. He did not tell Eve that she would eat bread in the sweat of her brow. Right. He told Adam mm -hmm. he would eat bread in the sweat of his brow. Right. Amen. So, I don't care who she is, how long she's been. Well, preacher, she's lazy. Well, you picked her. Right. You picked her. And we'll get into that here in a minute. <laughs> she's not to be a slave. Uh -uh. She's not to be a doormat. She ain't somebody for you to walk on. She's not somebody for you to insult. She's not somebody for you to make fun of. She's not somebody for you to talk down to or look down on. She sure ain't somebody when you're sitting on the job somewhere and you've got a bunch of men talking about their wives. You ain't got any business joining me. She is bone of your bone, flesh of your flesh. It's what the Word of God says. Therefore shall a man leave. His father and his mother shall cleave to his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. And when you treat her like a doormat, and you make fun of her, you're making fun of yourself. Yeah. You might not have the most perfect wife in the world, but don't be talking about it. Mm -mm. I've heard it for years. Well, she's just sorry. Well, hush. Genesis chapter 2. When God said it's not good for man to be alone. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. I know you've heard this. This ain't nothing new. God didn't make Eve out of a foot bone. He made her out of a rib. He took a rib. He took a a bone that I don't know which side he took it from. I don't care. But I do know this. Whichever side he took it from, it was close to his heart and it was under his arm. It was not under his feet. Ladies, uh-uh. You are not to be treated like a doormat to be walked on. Do not believe there will ever be an excuse for spousal abuse. You say whatever you want to say. She 
came from your rib next to your heart. And the Bible tells us very plainly. You say, yeah, well, you, in that Old Testament, it says, okay, in Ephesians chapter 5, this is one of those verses that a lot of men don't want to think about, but it said, no man is ever hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. If you have married her, then you are one flesh. If you despise her, according to Scripture, you despise yourself. Yeah. Right. You come home the evening and something ain't exactly right, you say, i just love to bust her upside the head. And let me tell you what you do. You get you a brick or a rock and put it in your right hand and smash yourself in the side of the head. This to me, don't laugh, because that's what you're saying. You said if I want to bust her, you're saying I just bust myself. Go ahead. Go ahead. Take that brick and just pop it upside your head. God gave you something special. Gave us something special. And she's not to be treated like a slave. She's not to be treated like a doormat in front of her. And I'm going to say this. I know what reality of life is. I see it more and more every day. She ain't to be put away when you get tired. Yeah. But you don't know what she did. Okay, let's get biblical. You say, preacher, she cheated on me. Well, if we was living biblical, we'd take her out and stone her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. They didn't divorce adulterers. They stoned right. Hello? Yeah. You say, well, wait a minute. No, no, no. You wait a minute. I have told you before. I don't know what your wedding vows said, but I know what mine said. For better, for worse, mm -hmm. for richer, for poorer, <laughs> In sickness and in hell. There have been times I didn't have a dollar in my pocket and yet she stayed with me. There have been times we've both gone through sickness and yet we stayed with each other. Mm -hmm. Has everything always been rosy and perfect at our house? No. But that's where the worst comes in. God said in Malachi chapter 3, the Lord had been, now listen to me, before I even, even look at that verse, I don't think God approves of a woman leaving her husband any more than he does a man leaving his wife, but he mentions the man leaving the wife. Mm -hmm. That's the one he zeroes in on. Man's got less patience than most women have, and a man's a whole lot quicker to jump in the car and go. The Lord hath been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously. Why? Why would we pray for something bad to happen to our spouse? The mother of our children, the one that we were joined together with. Why would we want to see something bad or evil happen to them? Yet, is she thy companion? She is the wife <coughs> of the covenant. You say, what do you mean covenant? Promise. Mm -hmm. She's the wife of thy vow. Now I know, me and my wife's both from Carroll County, Virginia, but we still, we wasn't so far back in the woods that her daddy and my daddy got together and said, well, here they are, let them go. No. No. We stood before a man of God mm -hmm. and we made promises. Mm -hmm. She is the wife of thy covenant. We made promises. We made an agreement. 
And the Bible says on down in verse 16 of that chapter 3 of Malachi, God said, and I hate the very act of putting away. And you say, why would he do that? Why would he hate it? Moses allowed for divorce in the law that God gave him. Moses allowed it. Jesus said, because of the hardness of your heart. Mm -hmm. He said, but in the beginning it was not so. Right. There was supposed to be one man and one woman. I'm glad he didn't say two individuals. He said one man and one woman. Right. Mm -hmm. He didn't say one man and one man. Mm -hmm. He didn't say one woman and one woman. He said one man and one woman. Right. And that's as it should be. Yes. And he said now, he tells us very plainly, if you leave and marry another, accept it be for fornication, and you want to split hairs, I'll split hairs with you. Mm -hmm. It does not say just sexual immorality. It says for fornication. Yep. We're going to talk about that after church. We will. Adultery is what happens when somebody that's married is fooling around. Mm -hmm. Fornication is what happens when somebody that ain't married right. is fooling around. Okay. You say, what's the difference? Like, big difference. Mm -hmm. You need an explanation? We'll talk after church. But he said, she is the wife of your covenant and I hate the act of putting away because Ecclesiastes chapter 5 tells us very plainly, better is it that thou shouldest not vow mm -hmm. and thou shouldest vow and not pay. It would be better for me to have stayed single my whole life mm -hmm. than to have married her and then left her. Fine. Now that's what the Word of God says. Don't get quiet on me now. That's what it says. Whether we want to accept it or whether we don't. So gentlemen, oh my, she is not to be your slave, she's not to be your doormat, and she's not to be put away. Well, what am I supposed to do, preacher? You're supposed to love her enough you're willing to die for her. Mm -hmm. You're willing to lay your life down. You're ready to take a bullet. You're ready to do whatever it takes that if she's going through some illness and you go to the hospital and you say, God, please, I'll take this on me if you'll take heal her. And mean it. And mean it. These women are supposed to be loved enough that us men will die for. Ephesians 5, 25. A lot of men forget this verse in here too. Husbands, love your wives as Christ also loved the church mm -hmm. and what? Gave Himself for it. Gave Himself for it. He loved the church. The church is referred to as the bride of Christ. He was willing to die for us and gentlemen, we ought to love her enough that we're willing to die for her. Those daughters of Zelophehad said, we got nothing. As, as daughters, we have no rights. We have nothing to look forward to. All we're going to be is just <coughs> whatever our husbands allow us to be. But God's Word says, that ain't how it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Not a slave, not a doormat, not put away, but loved enough to be willing to die for I'm finishing with this right here. Philippians chapter 2. We know how it goes that God has highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every name. And I'm thankful for that. The Bible also says that being formed and fashioned as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Ladies are not supposed to be treated as slaves. Mm -hmm. Get out and work beside them. My grandma, God bless her heart, man, she'd get out in the field beside my grandpa. Work like a dog. Mm -hmm. But he was right there matching her every step. Yep. He didn't put her out there and him stay at the house. She's not to be a doormat. Quit badmouthing her. Quit insulting her. Quit treating her like she's ignorant. They ain't got any sense. Mm -hmm. 
she's not to be put away. And when you sit back and you say, well, preacher, I just, there's times I don't even want to go home. That's a problem. Yeah. There was, there's been times in my life that I would get in the car and drive around before I got home because I didn't want to take it to the house. What that I didn't want to go home. But I didn't want to take my attitude home. I ought to desire. Your desire ought to be with her. You don't love her enough that you want to die for her. The daughters of Zalopa had said, we got nothing. We got nothing but in God's design and in God's plan. Ladies, He's lifted you up. Don't you ever think God's put you down. God's lifted you up. So this morning, here's the thing. If I'm to love her as Christ died for the church, as Christ loved the church, and I'm supposed to figure out, okay, why did Christ, how much did Jesus love for the church? He died for. Right. My question to you this morning, men and women alike, do you realize he died for you? Do you realize how much he loved you? Do you realize that he went to that cross while we were yet sinners? Christ died for us. Do you realize today we'll never be the, the man we're supposed to be or the woman we're supposed to be until we get Jesus Christ in our heart and life? You say, well, preacher, you know, I do a pretty decent job, but I don't settle for decent, don't settle for average, don't settle for mediocre. We need to be what God would have us to be. And first and foremost, God is not willing that any should perish, but the all should come to repentance. And what we need to do today to be the man and the woman that we ought to be this morning, to be the daddy, to be the, the mother that we ought to be this morning, to be the spouse that we ought to be, mm -hmm. is to come to know Christ yeah. and to be born into the family of God. Because mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, if you leave this world without Him, you think the daughters of Zalofa had had nothing. <laughs> you'll have nothing when you leave here. Mm -hmm. But thank God with Christ you're going to have it all. The Bible still says that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in thy heart God's raised from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. This morning, do you know? Do you know? You know, homes would be better if, 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 if we if we do them what God said to do them. Mm -hmm. There would be less fights. There would be less fusses. There would be less divorces. There would be less spousal abuse. You wouldn't hear about murder, suicides, and hope. Mm -hmm. She has no business being a slave, a doormat, or put out. She is to be loved as Christ loved the church. But we can't have that love in our heart until we are born again. So this morning, ladies, are you the spouse you ought to be? Are you saved by the grace of God? Gentlemen, are you the man you ought to be? You'll never be the man that you ought to be if you get Jesus Christ in your heart. You think, well, preacher, a lot of these Christians are just sissies. <coughs> if you don't think it takes... That, I ain't even going there. You ain't going to live for God to be a week. I'll just say what you want. Mm -hmm. So today, God would have all men to be saved, come to the knowledge of the truth, and whosoever shall call upon them in the Lord shall be saved. You make the choice this morning. Preach, am I the man I ought to be? God, I need to be the man I ought to be. God, I need to be the woman you want me to be. But that has to start at the cross of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the day you've given us, watching over us, taking care of us. We thank you for supplying our needs. We thank you for help and strength. We thank you for the way that you took care of us. God, you've been better than me and I ever deserve. Father, I thank you this morning for the opportunity we have to be in your house, the opportunity we have to look at portion of word. Father, well, I, I pray this made sense, and I pray God that 
<coughs> we'll let it end our hearts, soak it like a sponge, not let it run off our back. But I'm thankful for my wife, for the mother of my children. I'm thankful, Father, that your word tells us plainly how we are supposed to be. <coughs> God, I pray this morning that there is not a woman in this church. I pray this morning there's not a woman listening or a woman watching on Facebook that is treated like a slave or treated like a doormat or that's living her life in a way that she, she's afraid that she's going to be put out. But God, I truly pray this morning that every woman under the sound of my voice today truly knows that she is loved. Father, I realize this morning that there are people in here whose spouses are already gone and God, they'll step back sometimes and they'll say, well, I'm alone. God, let them realize they're not alone. But God, you promised you'll never forsake them, you never leave them, but that you go with them through every mile. So, Father, even when there might be nobody in this world we think loves us, thank God the bridegroom still does. Have your way in this invitation. Whatever's done, we'll give you the honor, we'll give you the glory. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.